Hi, welcome to DIY Cheap Daddy. Today I'm going to work on this uh, oil control valve solenoid, the VVT oil control valve or solenoid because the car having uh, a lot of ticking noise. I don't know whether you can see it. Uh, I don't think this is the issue, but I haven't changed it or inspected it for a long time since I owned the car. And now the car has almost uh, 200,000 on it. So I'm going to open this out, clean it up, and check it and see whether this is the one causing the problem. Uh, I also have uh, inspect the uh, water pump. Uh, it wasn't wobbling and the oil wasn't coming from there. Uh, but if you're not sure, you can disconnect the belt and pull the belt out and start the car. The only thing not working will be the alternator because there's no belt. And also the water pump will not be running. But at least you can eliminate where the noise comes from or this pulley. The compressor, the alternator and the water pump and then the uh, tensioner. So, uh, please stay tuned. First of all, uh, we are going to disconnect the battery. The valve is actually holding by a bolt and um, and one connector here and the bolt and then we just strictly pull it out. So press this down and this one I just help it a little bit. Here you go. So the key is press, press this down, and this one I just help it a little bit to push it up. And that's one nut over there. So we're going to turn this way. And we're going to just slightly push it out that way. And you can turn this a little bit to wiggle it. There's a lot of gun right here, so I'm going to uh, clean it out. And that's also is one of the reason it's so hard to push it out. I just hope uh, after I clean this my ticking noise will be gone but uh, if this is really bad you're supposed to have a check engine light turned on and the uh, and the code should be P0010 uh, 11 and P0011211311114 that kind of things but I don't have a check engine light and uh, however my engine is ticking so I would like to, since this is easy to do, I just uh, 
going to check this out whether the ohm is within the spec and maybe it's not really bad maybe it just need to be clean maybe it was uh, under the minimum uh, specification the valve is nothing more than holding by a nut here and also an o-ring so I will clean this up and at the same time I'm going to test that and see whether uh, it's in great working condition if this is bad you're supposed to have very rough idle very bad fuel uh, economy and you're supposed to know uh, something wrong with the car because the run is not the car is not running great and at the same time you also should have a check engine light so basically I'm going to test this oil control valve so this one I put on the negative and this one I put on the positive and I just put on the on the poles and you can see the valve is moving so later on I'm going to clean this up and I'm going to test the ohm So make sure you don't touch two terminal in there, otherwise you need a new oil control valve. I'm going to just use this the mass airflow sensor cleaner I'm going to spray this down because I don't want the cleaner to go up so. So just get a meter and I'm going to set to 200 ohm. And I'm going, I'm going to touch the two terminal and see whether it is within the spec. So right now it's about 9.2, 9.1, I believe it's between 8 to 12, but I'm going to later on go to the internet and find out. So it's about 9, okay let's do that again, yeah it's about 9.2, 9.3, oops. I would say it's around 9.3 Yeah, it's about 9.3 I'm going to just test one more to make sure there's no grounding issue
there should be nothing on the meter so we are good put back is same as how you remove it however I just add some dielectric grease on it for uh, better corrosive uh, corrosion preventive measure And in addition to that, I just lubricate with some oil just around the o-ring so I can push it back easier and also help to lubricate the o-ring a little bit. It doesn't need to be too tight as long as it's flat. Just come that back and make sure it has a kick sound. And we are done. So I was disappointed it wasn't the oil control valve because it was working. Um, however, if anyone know why I have that ticking sound recently uh, especially when the engine is cold uh, I believe the car is old and the lifter valve need to be adjusted or um, something else so please let me know uh, people put on the comment uh, what seems to be the issue we are try to make this car for another run for another few years, and I refuse to pay a five thousand dollar over manufacturing suggest retail price uh, just because of the computer chip is in shortage. So please let me know and um, how I can fix the uh, noisy engine. Thank you so much like subscribe and comment thank you there's another one right here so i'm going to do the same thing there's one nut down here and the connector is right here so i disconnect this and un remove the lug and just push it out and check it same as the the one in the front after that we just need to push it that way so be careful not to hurt your hand
and we just push that way. Be careful, don't hurt your hand when you over run. So slowly, let's push. Okay, same nice, same as this one. So we're going to test this one just like the other one to make sure it's working and within the spec. I'm going to clean it the same way as the other one. So I haven't hooked up the equip yet. So Same way as I test the other one. So I'm going to check the spec and make sure it's within the range. This this one I have about eight point three. So the range is 8 to 12, so this one is a little bit weak. Yeah, still 8.3. So this one still good. I have 8.3, so it's on the lower lower side. So I'm going to put this back. If I have a chip part, then I uh, probably just replace it because it's so easy to replace. Because nothing more than a just a clip and another screw over there. Okay. So basically, you have two: one here and one over there. Thank you for watching. So I'm going to apply some oil so I can push it back easier. Same as the other one. And the uh, insulation is just the reverse of how I take it off. So just push it and you should have a big quick sound and and the signal noise in. So just at the back there's a bracket. So just make sure you put back put that bracket where the bracket is holding the this cable. Just make sure you put back the bracket. There's a bracket holding for holding this cable. So just 
just going in with the bracket with your bolt. And then after that, just make sure your bolt go back, go through the bracket. There's a bracket holding this cable. So just make sure you go through that. And then that's it. Put back the connector, make sure you have a kick sign. That's it. Thank you for watching. Oh, um, one final point. Uh, since we disconnect the battery and we connect again, and every time when we do that, uh, Toyota seems to have an issue on the idle uh, because the battery has been disconnected. And uh, sometimes you will be rough idle a little bit and you will go back to normal within hours or within days uh, after you drive the car for certain miles. Uh, however, you can also follow this procedure to reset it. So this is what you're going to do. Uh, the most important thing remember is when you do this, the car need to be in normal uh, uh, temperature, which is uh, after you run for 10 or 15 miles. So the car is warm up in normal uh, uh, temperature. So you're going to uh, turn on the car, but not start two times. And on the third time you turn on the car and turn off everything, AC, uh, USB charger, everything use uh, the electricity uh, or the battery. And then put that in drive and run the car for 5 minutes or 6 minutes. And after that you can turn it off and start your test drive. And it's supposed to... Uh, uh, the idle is supposed to back to normal because the computer knows this is the sequence uh, to reset the idle and so forth. So we're going to give that a try. So your car is uh, in normal temperature, which I did because I ran the car before this. And put that in one time. Turn your back. Two times, turn it back, and the third time we're going to start the car. When you start the car, you put the handbrake up, you put the in drive, and let it run for five to six minutes. And this is supposed to reset the computer on idle and uh, everything is supposed to back to normal. So sometimes you don't need to do that but if your car after disconnect battery and connect again uh, you can follow this reset procedure and the car is supposed to go back to normal right away. And after that you do a test drive and to make sure everything is fine. Okay, thank you so much for watching.